Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Coach Matt Ellis, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Thank you all so much for checking out the video today. Before we go any further, I say this at every video, but it really, really helps the channel. Please make sure to go down and click that subscribe button right down below, and also click that bell notification icon. This way you are notified of all of our future videos, and that's important because we're gonna be doing a lot of video series like we're doing today. Today is actually day three, part three, of essentially teaching your gliders, teaching your throwers, getting them all on the same page and gliding in their first week of practice. Now look, at these are your options. Essentially, if you have a track meet at the end of the week, if you have a really short season and you have track meets at the end of your first week of the season, you can't do it. You've gotta go straight to the glide drills that we're gonna be taking you through today. But if you don't have a meet and you do have some extra time, you definitely want to review day two. Day two is essentially a super, super important day. It's gonna to explain to your athletes how to get in that power position and how to do a standing throw. And the power position is such a monster part of not just the glide, but of all the other throwing events. You wanna take some extra time and stick with that for an extra day if you can. Now, if you can't, like a lot of us this year, we're not gonna be able to. So if you have a meet, if you have a short week of practice, if the weather is terrible like it is right now and you can't get outside, you gotta go straight to these glide drills. Listen, I have said it for the past 11 years that we've been doing these videos. Athletes learn three ways. Athletes learn by doing, athletes learn by listening, and athletes learn by watching. And they need to watch some really good examples of top gliders doing their thing so they can see what a glide actually looks like. Imagine trying to explain to somebody how to swing a golf club and they've never seen it done before. That's essentially what your new athletes are doing and even some of your intermediate athletes are doing if you've never shown them what a good glider looks like. So you can go to YouTube and you can type in, you know, top gliders of all time, top female gliders, top 10 glides, but they're gonna be able to see examples of exactly what a good glide looks like. So take the time to show that to them. All right, so remember what I just said, athletes learn by watching and athletes learn by listening and doing. The doing is the drills. You're gonna be doing a lot today and they've already watched. Now they need to listen. They need to listen to you explain the glide. And here's what I want you to explain to your athletes. Explain to them why the thrower starts low in the back. Explain to them how they're getting into a power position in the middle of their throw. Explain to them how they accelerate. Explain to them how they push through the heel, how the heel is the last part of their foot to come off the ground. Explain to them how they're using their non-throwing arm. You can explain that all to them as they're actually doing or as they're actually watching these throwers. You'll be able to actually say, hey, this is why he's doing it. This is why he's doing that. Start to break down the glide and explain it to them. The other thing that you wanna explain is how the back of the circle, when they get started in the glide, is very similar to the power position. They're starting low. All of their weight is on their power foot. They have all of their weight back. The shot's up against the neck. They're looking at something behind them. They're pointing their head, pointing their nose at something behind them. All of that stuff, having their non-throwing arm just sort of hanging back, back behind them like it is in the power position. Explain to them the power position similarities. That way they can go through and say, hey, this is something that I've already been doing for the past couple of days. This is something that I already know about weight shifting or I already know about keeping my shoulders back. I already know about keeping my head back. It's gonna take a lot of that tension off of them and make them realize that they don't really have a lot of new stuff to learn today, but they're gonna be going through and doing things that are very similar to what they've been doing the past couple of days. The other big thing is that we want to emphasize the power position, okay? So in those videos, show them how the glide that they are gliding and they are landing in the middle of the circle in that power position. So they can see, ah, oh, there it is. There's that frame by frame slow motion of you know, that glider from 1992 or whatever. But look at how it's a power position in the middle. Remember you guys, you were in this position yesterday and now all we're gonna do is glide into that position today. They shouldn't think that the glide is a completely different thing 
than what they've been doing the past couple days. They need to know that what they've been doing the past couple days is a huge, massive part of that glide. That way, when they get in the circle, they know that the power position has to be there. All right, so the last 60 minutes of practice, you are gonna be taking your athletes through these seven drills. Now, these drills are meant to get them used to the back of the circle. They're meant to teach really good habits in the back of the circle, and they're meant to be done in this order. So you've already shown them what a good glide looks like. You've already explained to them the really good parts of the glide, how it connects to what you've been doing. And now you're gonna have them learn by doing. And these are the seven drills that I find work the best to teach your athletes how to glide correctly. All right, so the seven drills are 90 degree hops. We're gonna show you what all these looks like. 90 degree hops, then the knees together, toe to heel, the rollbacks or the hip drop, the A drill, glide holdbacks, gliding over an object, and then the hardest one in my opinion, the one that's gonna challenge them, but the one if they work hard at it in practice, this is the hardest glide drill, but the best one to teach them everything is gliding without putting down their blocking foot. So essentially gliding and landing balanced on just their power foot without putting the blocking foot down. You cannot do these in a circle. It takes way too much time. It is a massive waste of time. If you just have one kid get in the circle, do a couple drills, and then go in the back of the line and wait for 10 minutes, you are wasting that athlete's time. Get your athletes out of the circle. Get them in a parking lot, get them on the track, get them on a basketball court, tennis court, wherever you have available to you that has lines, that's all you need. Let me show you what this all looks like. All right, so here we go, lines. The first exercise that you're gonna do is that 90 degree hop. Now the 90 degree hop is gonna get your athletes used to turning that power foot. So when they glide out of the back, they're gonna be turning that power foot. They're gonna push. The heel is gonna be the last thing touching the ground. Then they're gonna be in zero support where both feet are off the ground. That power foot's going to land first and they're gonna turn that power foot. If they're right-handed, they're gonna be turning that power foot, that right foot over toward nine o'clock. If they're lefties, it's gonna be the left foot toward three o'clock, okay? If 12 o'clock is the back of the circle. So all you're gonna do are little 90 degree hops and get them used to going from pointing at 12 and landing up on the ball of their foot, pointing at nine o'clock or three o'clock. For me as a righty, it's nine o'clock. So let's take a look and show you what this is like. We're gonna get right over. Okay, not too crazy. Nice, easy way to introduce them to turning that power foot. So they're gonna be used to coming out of the back and turning that foot, turning that knee, pointing them at nine o'clock. Really simple, easy way to get them started. It's also a great warm up for the hip, the knee, and the ankle. All right, next one, we're gonna be doing knees together, toe to heel. So this really starts them out in the back of the throwing circle. So what you wanna do, is you wanna get back on your line, just like we've done plenty of times in the past, and we're gonna have them get set up so that they are in the back of the circle. So what you're gonna do is have them come over that power foot. You're gonna have all of the weight on the power foot, and you're gonna have their back nice and flat. Have them kind of round it over, have their back nice and flat, parallel with the ground. Now you don't have to have a shot in the hands, you don't have to do anything. I've had athletes put their hands on their hips before, I've had them cross their arms in front of them. And basically just get them used to being in that position, okay? Get them used to having all of their weight on their power leg. And then from there, you have them bring their knees together and you have them bring their toe right next to the heel. So I'm gonna show you from this angle and then I'm gonna turn around, you're gonna see my butt, and I'm gonna show you the other angle. So here's what it looks like. Knees together, toe to heel. All right, knees together, toe to heel. Here it is from another angle.
So as you can tell, it's super important that the knees come together. We want to see knees together. Toe is going to be next to the heel. We don't want the toe to go behind the heel. We don't want the toe to kick the heel. We want the toe right next to the heel. That's going to ensure that when they glide, they are staying in a straight line. All right, the next one is my favorite one or one of my favorites, and it is the hip drop or rollbacks. So I like this drill a lot because when athletes first start out gliding, even the more experienced athletes, they think that they're supposed to push off their toe. They think that they kind of calf raise out of the back of the circle, when in reality, the last part of the foot that is actually touching the back of the circle is the heel. So you're actually going to be lifting up the toe and pushing with the heel being the last thing on the ground, pushing through that heel, all right? So one of the things that we use to combat that idea that it's a jump off the toe or it's a push off the toe are these rollbacks. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take that idea of knees together and toe to heel, and we're gonna have them start to shift their weight backwards, kind of drop their butt, drop their hips, and start to roll backwards. Now they're not gonna actually roll and do like a backflip on the ground, like a back somersault on the ground. They're gonna just basically fall backwards, shift their weight backwards, and then have to catch themselves as they do it. So here's what it looks like. So they start to shift backwards, okay? They lift up that toe of their power foot. They lift up their toes. They start to roll backwards on the heel. Let me show you from behind. Let me show you one more time. Basically, you're just trying to get them in that idea of their hips drop, they start to roll, and they start to lift the toes so they can push through the heel. All right, so the next one that we have is the A drill. The A drill is a super popular drill with glide shot putters. It's a drill that I don't really like that much. I included it in here because I think it's got some really good teaching points. The one thing I don't like about the A drill that you're gonna see is that a lot of times when athletes do the A drill a lot, especially when it's more of an active A drill where they're kind of gliding and moving into it and doing all this other stuff, a lot of times they think they have to land with their blocking foot first because their blocking foot's already on the ground. So it's not the best as long as your athletes know why they're doing it and they understand why they're doing it. It's a great drill, but you do want to explain to them that when they do the full glide, it's actually their power foot that hits first followed immediately by their blocking foot. They don't hit at the same time and you don't hit blocking foot first. All right, so here's what the A drill looks like. We're gonna start sort of in this split position, okay? So we're gonna start with both feet on the ground and we're gonna get up on the heel of that power foot. Again, when we glide, the heel is the last part of the foot that is touching the circle, okay? In this position, you have to imagine that we are in zero support. Both feet are off the ground, we're gliding out of the back of the circle and we're in zero support. So you just gotta kinda imagine that and you gotta explain this to your athletes too. You're in zero support. This is the A drill because your legs look like the letter A. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna teach your athletes to pull that leg underneath their body and turn their foot toward either nine o'clock for a righty or three o'clock for a lefty. Again, as a right-handed thrower, I'm gonna be turning my foot toward nine o'clock. So here's how I teach it. I wanna get really, really low, as low as I can get, as low as my flexibility will allow. All your athletes are different. And then we're gonna turn that foot toward nine o'clock. Here's what it looks like. Not the best, let's try it again. All right, that's a little bit better. But essentially, it's gonna teach them to quickly pull that foot underneath them, quickly pull that leg underneath them and turn that foot and turn that knee toward either nine o'clock 
or three o'clock. You can see then if you have your athletes do this that already know how to glide, they might assume, well, this foot's gonna be on the ground. So they glide and it might be the blocking foot first, then the power foot. Just explain to them that this is a right leg drill. This is a drill where we're working on getting that foot to be underneath. Suck that leg underneath, point the knee and the toe toward nine o'clock. All right, another one of my all time favorite drills, a drill that I use all the time. All you need to do is basically find something to hold on to. Maybe it's a chain link fence or a gate or something around the throwing area where you're practicing. We use it in here indoors. This is one of our favorite drills and it is a glide hold back. All you're gonna do is have your athletes start to glide while holding on to an object. That object is going to hold their upper body back and teach them that they have to keep their head back, keep their shoulders back, and keep their non-throwing arm back. It's very simple. All we're gonna do is we're gonna start to mimic those throwers that we saw in the videos from earlier today. We're gonna start by grabbing onto an object. Again, it could be a chain link fence. Here I'm gonna use this bar, but it could be absolutely anything that you have available to you. Any type of fencing works, the discus cage, any fencing around a football field, fencing around a parking lot, anything that you have available you can use for this, okay? So here is the glide hold back. We're gonna start here, glide position. Start up on that power leg, that power foot, okay? And all we're gonna do is glide and hold our hands back. See it again. And one more time. Now notice what happens. If I were to pick my hands up, I'm gonna fall backwards. It teaches your athletes to keep all their weight back. It teaches them to keep their non-throwing arm back, their head back, their chest back. If they don't let go of that bar or the fence or whatever you're holding onto, they're gonna learn, oh my God, I have to keep all of this back. I have to hold everything back. Now look, my, ch my chest is back, shoulders, head back. Everything is back. Look what I'm doing, I'm keeping everything back. It's gonna get them in the habit of here, twisting their hips, twisting the knee, twisting everything underneath them and landing on the ball of that right foot. So now that I explained that, watch all the good stuff that comes out of this drill. Head back, eyes back, shoulders back, non-throwing arm, my left arm is gonna stay back and then we're gonna glide. We're gonna work on landing power leg first. The power foot and the power knee are turned. The blocking foot landed second and look how far back my weight is. Look at this position. If I were to let go, I would fall forward. That's how far back. And then all you have to do, step up against the fence, do it again. Step up against the fence, do it again. You can do about 20 of these drills in about two minutes and your athletes are gonna be learning so many good habits. Okay, so we've only got two left. Believe it or not, we are ready for the glide. Now we're gonna have your athletes glide over an object. Now for this, I'm using the yellow line as an object, but you can use absolutely anything. You can use a band, you can use a towel, you can use a jump rope, whatever you have available out at your throwing area or in your practice area, that's what you wanna do. And basically you wanna move the object to be about two and a half, three feet behind their foot, and they're going to glide over it. Now obviously you don't want anything really tall, you don't want anything like a broomstick or a javelin that they're going to step on that might roll underneath them, but a towel works really well, um, a stretch out strap, a nylon strap, a jump rope, a band. We have lots of stuff in the gym like the bands hanging up on the rack behind me that I could have used, but the yellow line is here and you have a bunch of lines at your practice area, so why not use the lines? So all you're gonna do is have them set up like they're in the back of the circle. They're gonna be right here in the back of the circle and essentially what they're gonna do is they're gonna glide and they're gonna land on the other side of that yellow line or of that rope or whatever it is in a power position. So you wanna to explain to them, you're gonna put all the pieces together. They've been doing these drills, they're starting to get it. All the pieces are gonna to be together. They're gonna to do the knees together, toe to heel. They're gonna do that roll back and then they're going to explode. They're going to push, keeping the head back, shoulders back, everything back, just like they did on those holdbacks. 
They're going to hold everything back and they're going to turn that foot just like they did on those holdbacks and they're going to land in that power position, in that reset drill position. All right, so here's what it looks like. Start in the back. Turn the foot, power position. They hurdled over that object, they glide over that object, and then they start over again. Now, what you can do, you can move the object back. So, let's take this orange band. It's a little bit frayed, it's a little bit gross. Now let's put it about six inches back of that yellow line. Now this might represent the middle of the circle. We want it to glide and land in the front half. This will represent the middle of the circle. So we'll have them start out same spot. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. Now it's not the prettiest glide in the world and their glides won't be that pretty either, but it's gonna start them on that path to taking a nice big glide, getting a big kick and a big push out of the back of that circle, staying low, turning that right foot, and then landing in the front half of the circle. They're not gonna be dragging their foot. They're not gonna be landing blocking foot first. They're gonna be doing everything before this that leads up to it, okay? All the stuff that we have done, the 90 degree turn, guess what? They're turning 90 degrees. Okay, everything that we have done leading up to this point, and now you're about an hour and 15 minutes into practice, and you have your athletes going through a glide, landing in a power position. Okay, so here we go, seventh drill of the day. It's the hardest glide drill in existence, at least that's what I call it, and this is gliding without putting down the blocking foot. Now, this solves a lot of issues, okay? That's why this drill is so good. This is one that you wanna keep in your back pocket to make sure you save it for when your athletes are having a tough time gliding. So, your athlete is landing blocking foot first, this is a drill to fix it. Your athlete is landing too open and is shifting way too early. This is a drill to fix it. Your athlete is not turning their foot 90 degrees. This is the drill to fix it. And essentially, it's what you just did. It's the same exact drill as hurdling over that object, as gliding over that object. You're just not going to put your blocking foot down. You're going to just land balanced on the power foot. Let's see if I can still do it. Okay, I might fall, I might tear an ACL, I might break my leg. Let's see what happens, okay? So we're gonna start out, regular back of the circle stuff. So right on the line, okay, so we're on the line. We're gonna go down in that position, we're gonna glide, we're gonna put it all together, and then we're gonna land without putting our blocking foot down. Let's see what this looks like. Whoa, ah! Weight shifted at the very end. See how my weight shifted? I stood up, my weight shifted, and I fell onto that blocking foot. Let's try it again. Let's do it wrong a few times. Wink, wink, let's do it wrong a few times. So now let's try to turn and open our shoulders up too early. Remember, we're not holding ourselves back like the previous drill. Now we're gonna turn and open and see what happens. You automatically fall. The shoulders turn. You opened up, you automatically fall, it's not possible. So now let's keep the shoulders back and let's see if we can do it. Whoop, there we go. So now, shoulders stayed back. They opened up a little, I'm a little bit tight, but the shoulders stayed back, the head stayed back. I was able to land power foot first, like you should when you do the full throw. I didn't turn and open up. I didn't turn and throw my head. I didn't shift my weight. I didn't stand up. I stayed low. I kept my weight back. I stayed closed. I landed power foot first, so I was able to balance. It fixes so many problems, guys. That's why it's such a tough drill for your athletes to do, because they're just learning. But once they've learned and they do it correctly, you can go back to this drill to fix any little technical issues that might be happening. Okay, so at this point, here's where we are at. Here are the seven drills, okay? Now go back, take that list of drills, go watch one of the top gliders in the world throw, okay? Go, go to YouTube, top 10 glides ever, top farthest glides ever, type it into the search, 
and see what pops up. Now take those seven drills that I just showed you and see if you can pick those out, especially in the slow motion going frame by frame. See if you can pick those out with those world-class throwers and see exactly where those drills come from. They're part of the throw. We just broke the throw down to teach your athletes, okay? So the 90 degree hop is right here in the middle. When they land, the foot's gonna be turned 90 degrees. That is the 90 degree hop. Okay, the rest of them go in the back of the circle. So knees together, toe to heel. That's the start of the throw. All right, roll back, hip drop. We're gonna be here, knees together, toe to heel. We're gonna to start to roll off of that power foot, push through the heel. The heel is the last thing touching the ground. Okay, from there, we've got the A drill. Well, look, that's the glide here. We're gliding and then boom, we've got that push. We've got that zero support driving through that heel. Now we're floating in the air. You've got to kind of imagine we're floating through the air. If you take a look at any of the top gliders in the world and you hit pause at the right time, you'll see this position right here and they are going to be in the air. They're going to be in zero support. After that, we've got the holdbacks. That's obviously holding the head the shoulder, the chest, and the non-throwing arm back when they land in the power position. After that, we're gliding over the object. Look, we have a line that goes right down the middle of the circle. So now we're gliding over the object. We're starting here. Gliding over the object. And finally, we have the glide without putting the blocking foot down. Again, if you hit pause at the right time, especially slow motion video on YouTube, you can break down that slow motion video by clicking settings and you can go to one quarter speed. So you can make that slow motion video even more slow motion. You'll be able to pause it when the power foot is down on the ground in the front half of the circle and the blocking foot has not yet touched down. It looks like this you'll be able to actually see this if you pause it at the right time. All of these drills are just parts of the throw. And if you teach it in the right order, your athletes will be learning how to glide and then going from the back of the circle, gliding with good technique, not perfect, but hey, for the third or fourth day of practice, pretty darn good, and landing in the power position. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for me. It's about 11 o'clock at night, so I am out of here. My wife is probably wondering where I am at this point. Thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, there's no advertisements on these videos. There's no ads on the videos. We're not sponsored by anybody. Um, we're not backed by some big money company. It's just me doing these videos, doing all the recording, doing all the editing, purchasing all the equipment, thinking up the ideas, and doing these for you guys late at night after my gym closes. So thank you all so much for checking out the video. Please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. There's also a subscribe button at the very end of this video that you can click as well. And to check out any of our other videos, please make sure, check out all the videos that will pop up at the end. And if there's any questions, Anything that you guys want to learn about, please leave a comment down below. I reply back to all of the comments. And if you want to see something in a future video, all you got to do is ask. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And I will talk to you all real soon.